Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are diving into API documentations in .NET 9 using OpenAPI and Scalar. I'll be following my blog posts, which you can find linked below and uh, walking you through every step by step. Let's get started. Before jumping into Scalar, let's quickly talk about how API documentation is typically handled in .NET. Many projects use Swashbuckle. I'm also using Swashbuckle because it comes um, integrated with ABP and I use ABP for most of my projects. This is how it normally looks like, which works great for most of the use cases. But as you can see, it doesn't look modern. It's not mobile friendly and it can feel sluggish sometimes. And that is also no search. So if you want to search any endpoint, it's going to be hard. And also it seems like they are not doing so much of a development and the project is kind of abandoned. So that is why Microsoft is promoting Scalar as an alternative for doing API documentations in .NET. As you can see, it has a very modern looking implementation and Scalar is just not for .NET. It is an open source project. You can go to scalar.com and find out more information about Scalar. Uh, it's an open source project. You can find all their details um, here in the GitHub repo. And there is some limitations. Right now, they are still working on their authentication roadmap. Once that is ready, I think it will have a feature parity with the Swagger. Until then, there might be some limitations. And also, there are quite a few changes coming in in OpenAPI. As you can see in the older uh, .NET versions, you will have a Swagger JSON generated at the path slash swagger slash v1 slash swagger.json. This is changing and uh, the OpenAPI path is changing how they are generating this OpenAPI uh, endpoints is changing, how the documentation will be compiled is changing. Um, and all these uh, implementations will be supported by Scalar um, because that is what Microsoft is uh, targeting uh, in the modern version. So I hope you understand what uh, Scalar is. It's just an open source project um, for API documentation. It provides a better UI, it provides a little bit better performance. It is mobile friendly, it has dark mode, and you can search. Um, and it has um, first class support for um, SDK generation, um, yeah, and it's been used by quite a bit of uh, people. And you can brand it however you want, um, yeah, and you can customize it however you like. So let's see how to set up Scalar in our document, in our .NET application. The first thing is to create a simple app. I will first go to my terminal, go to Sandbox, and then Let's follow the blog post. So here in the blog post, you can see um, I'm creating a new web application. Let's do that. Ah, okay, maybe I created um, this web app already. Yeah, not one. I will use VS Code from here. I will increase the size so that you guys can see. And as you can see, this is an empty application. There is nothing here and we will uh, open the terminal and start adding packages. Um, I will close my terminal. And then this is the package we want to add. This is the open API package. Okay. And then the second one is the scale app. Okay. Now, once these two packages are added, you can come and see that, okay, the packages are done. And let's update our uh, basic configuration. Um, this is the um, basic application we have i will just copy it and then replace it and then i can go and slowly explain uh, what we have here so what we have here is the simple builder um, and then i think maybe for initially i don't have to do any of this so that it's easier to understand okay so um yeah um i have uh scalar.asp.core and then a builder i said just add open api and then i'm creating the builder and i am mapping the op uh, open api and then mapping the scalar and once this is done you can actually just run it and then see how this looks like do dot net build and then dot net run and this is going to look like this 
and as you can see there is nothing here um, because we have only one endpoint which is get and then I said exclude from description that that will exclude um, the endpoint which is slash uh, from the description and uh, as you can see that the JSON endpoint for us is also different so you can see that the JSON is available at open API slash v1 dot json so this is the json uh which is generated right now as you but here in the olden uh apis you can see that that is coming from the swagger v1 swagger json so this is one important thing to remember okay where is the api where's the json available that's now available at open api slash v1 and um where is the ui available the ui is available at slash scalar slash v1 um, and we go there this is where the documentation is available and next step is just normal you can do app dot uh, map map get and then you can say um product and then you can just uh, do a simple product and we'll do a dot net watch so that it just it automatically reloads yeah so you can see that now you have a product uh, endpoint and um in this product endpoint we can do a lot of additional things um i have mentioned that in my blog post you can do like things like uh descriptions i will just reduce all these things okay i don't have this class yet so i will just remove this but all the other things we have and then we go and then we refresh we can see that uh it produces uh 2000 and you have a uh, yeah so it has a name summary description and yeah now you have this uh Litrieve's list of all the products you can see that um uh, the description is also available you can easily add a lot of information to your um, api endpoints and in dotnet 10 you don't have to do this because they're, they're also doing a lot of work where these can also be inferred from your uh, XML commands where you have comment which is pretty descriptive in your existing application. What they done is that uh, they will read all these comments, uh, the XML comments, and then generate all these things for you and then display it in the uh, in the Open API endpoint. And then from the Open API endpoint, the scalar a scalar will pick it up and display it for you. Yeah, and um, so. Um, this is pretty simple, but as you can see that there is nothing else here. Uh, you have client libraries on how to consume these libraries. You have almost all the possible combinations here, HTTP client, REST apps, Dart, Go. So whatever the language you want, it gives you a nice way to consume your APIs and also gives you example in so many other languages. That is actually really nice, but we still don't see um, configurations like okay how do i do auth how do i do token authentication all these things are not there um and also how do i customize these things which are not there um so let's go and customize this information first to customize that we need to um customize this open api endpoint so let's go to my blog post um this is where you add transformers i have updated this here i will come back and then okay just make sure it's rebuilt yeah see that now i have a, a customization of my um api and then you have a, some basic information um, about your api this is just for the api but if you want to uh, do advanced stuff like uh, token authentication you have to add more transformers so for that i have provided an example here where you say you, say you are out authentication and you provide a GWT bearer authentication and then you add a bearer security schema transformers. Um, maybe we can do that as well. So I will go and update the builder. Um, maybe let's, let's update the builder, but then we don't have this uh, bearer security authentication. Let's go and build that as well. Uh, this is going to be a sealed class and let's quickly import all the things which are needed okay that is there and now what's missing is let's add the authentication middleware so that 
that also works. Um, okay, this is also JWT defaults. Okay, for JWT, we need this package. Um, I think I forgot to install that. Okay, now that should be also available. Now let's build the, yeah. So now we have our beer token authentication ready. Uh, I think I had a mistake here. I should not use authorization because I don't have any authorization. I only had authentication uh, implemented. And yeah, so I implemented authentication, JWT bearer, and then um, and then we have our authentication implemented. And then the bearer security transformer is also available. You can get the code from my blog post here. Um, it is pretty simple to implement a simple uh, bearer transformer where uh, you just um, add the um, CTP schema, a bearer, and then the header. So this will automatically get implemented in your UI. And testing your um, scalar uh, request is pretty simple. Now you have a bearer token here where you just have to generate however you like and then just send your request and it just works. And you have a search implementation where you can also search all the API endpoints you have and then you have a model uh, which is which works exactly like how it works in Swagger. As I said before they are still working on other authentication types like what which are still not supported so yeah that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you liked it um, and um, see you guys in another video. Bye bye.